Peace and blessings, my brother. What's going on, family? How you doing? I'm doing good, my brother. I want to start off by saying, first and foremost, I appreciate you doing this with me, my brother. I appreciate you getting on the live and just um, making yourself available. Yes. Um, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, man. Yeah, like, I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, first and foremost, uh, th this is the brother King Randall we got on the live with us today, the, the founder of the X for Boys. Um, could you just give us a quick overview what the X for Boys is? And um, you said you're 22, right? 23. I'm 23 now. 23, 23 now. Um, what got a 23-year-old man to do the things that you're doing right now? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, basically, uh, just to give a brief description, uh, the X for Boys program uh, works with young men ages 11 to 17, uh, teaching them different skill trades, such as how to work on cars, houses. Um, also teaching them how to be a man, uh, teaching them mm -hmm. different uh, habits and values um, that you should have learned from your grandfather and your father growing up, but most mm -hmm. of the men that I work with are you know with single moms so we try and be that balance for them we also are a boarding school so the students that you know um, are with us they board um they're with us 24 7 and mainly to take them away from a lot of their uh harmful environments that they're in um some of them being starved some of them being molested some mm. of them being abused etc um a lot of you know black boys are saying that i can't breathe you know at this very moment so this is our time to step in and remove that metaphorical knee off their neck and that's what we're trying to do uh with our boys um but other than that that's a really brief description of what we do of course you can go follow me there and you can go see some of our videos and uh pictures of some of the things that we do with our boys and you guys on like a trip right now? I saw you post something about that. The other day. Oh no, we, we're back. We're back home now. The boys are on Thanksgiving break, um, so we had took a few of them uh, with us to Utah. Uh, a company flew us out there um, just to show us the insurance industry, and um, it was actually an overwhelming learning experience because I didn't know so much went into insurance. Almost like literally everything mm. insured. It's, it's so crazy, but um, it was great to check that industry out and to see you know a guy who went from only having a high school diploma to building a multi million dollar empire to insuring some of the biggest people you know in the game he's like the number one insurance company in the in the whole united states but they don't have commercials or anything you know um because mm -hmm. they don't need it. their product speaks for itself so i wanted to ask you what, what what gave you the um the confidence to start something like the extra boys and not feel like um you had to go through some type of um larger political pack or political structure in order to do that what and because you, you know i heard you talk on a high level conversations about you funding it off your pocket you know out of your pocket um mm -hmm. initially to begin with and you weren't really worried about the help coming you had to do it until the help came uh what gave you that confidence to do that and what gave you that mindset of do for self you know uh, I knew I had the answer, um, and that's just period, point blank. Um, I knew I had the answer. I still have the answer to, to solve that issue. I'm working on trying to build it in other places and other states and cities. I've seen this program thrive, you know, just out of my house. So imagine us having the, the real funding to be able to take care of our students and, you know, just people in general. Um, but, yeah, I didn't I – didn't, I didn't need an okay from anybody. Um, and then the more people came and told me that it was impossible, the more it made me want to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Had my brain set up. So the more people was like, oh, that's not going to happen. Oh, you too young. Or what you know about being a man and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, bet. Well, I'm going to show y'all, you know, what we're going to do with our boys. And we're going to show you, you know, how we do this thing. Um, but And I was able to find a loophole, you know, and um, and make these things happen. We're opening our school. We're able to keep the government out of our school so we can teach what we want to teach at our school so nobody can come tell us you know we can't teach this or we can teach that or we got to teach this no we're not doing none of that we only scratch if we itch and we only dance if we like the music um and that's mm. that's what i think is important um you know for our school has anybody <laughs> um reached out to you about uh running for political office is that something that you ever thought about no uh -uh. I'm, I'm strictly you know working with our students um, who knows what 10, 20 years will hold down the line as of right now. That's my sole focus is making sure our students are being served right now um, and making sure they're, you know, actually thriving with us, you know, because a lot of people do have programs. People are doing programs all over, but they just have programs and they're not being effective. Um, and that's mm. what I believe is, is important, um, making sure you're actually serving those kids. What are the parents saying about their children? What are the boys saying? How are they developing? Are they learning how to read? You know, are their grades coming up? You know, are they developing new habits? Are they coming out of their old habits? You know, just all this stuff is important um, in, in just making sure 
um, we are actually serving the community where we are. Um, and I, that's what I think is important first and foremost before we even jump into politics and all that stuff. People just do stuff to look good and not actually making no effective change. Mm. So why would you say is what would you say is is the biggest reason why people might not take a more grassroots approach with negative things that they see in their community and why they would prefer to vote somebody in to um, lobby for their interests rather than actually making a you know grassroots effort about it. Right. Um, before I say anything else, uh, everybody's watching this video right now. Please make sure you share and uh, make sure everybody's seeing this. Uh, yes. so get the viewers up and people could actually hear uh, this good conversation. Um, but um, that's all, that's I mean that's all we've been taught for the most part. You've only been taught to vote. Um, nobody's shown you, you know, that you can go and actually do something for yourself. You don't know what you don't know. Um, it took me listening to a few Malcolm X videos, you know, to be like, mm. oh, this, this applies in 2022. Well, I can do that now. Well, I can do mm. that. I can do that now. You know, so but everybody's thing like that. You didn't know what you didn't know. So a, a lot of it is is introducing, you know, it to. Um, to people and just telling people about it and just showing them like, I, you know, we have so many people that make so many excuses, especially in our community, uh, even where I live about why things couldn't have been done, you know, uh, for the kids and blah, blah, blah like that. But then here I come, you know, at 19 and I started the program out of my house, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that eradicated all the excuses that all the other leaders had given about why our communities are the way they are. And I'm just like, we could have been doing this stuff. Y'all got super huge churches and all that, all you pastors and all y'all. Y'all could have been doing something for these kids. I've been doing this literally just by cutting hair and fixing cars and painting people's houses. And that mm -hmm. was out. And that was what I was able to do to, to fund our field trips and stuff like that. But, you know, now, of course, we, you know, have a small bit of notoriety and people, you know, donate and stuff like that. But imagine if we had the funding like these churches and stuff get, you know, we'd be tearing it up out here, you know, fixing our communities. But until then, we do what we can, you know, with our kids. But people have only been taught, you know, just. Vote the next politician in every freaking every freaking uh cycle, you know, and that gets on mm -hmm. my nerves because they all out here on the side of the road today with these Warnock signs or the Walker signs or what have you. Everybody out so hard for that crap every freaking four years, but I don't see y'all out here protesting and, and making sure your kids is out here getting what they need. You know, these children mm -hmm. out here waiting to to get some help. They wish you would go hold a sign up for them. And, and you know, I'm just like, mm -hmm. why are you not out here pushing that? You know, why are you not out here doing nothing for these children out here that are that are screaming, you know, for help, especially like where I live only, I think it's only 19% of the kids are graduating proficient in math and only uh, just under 39% of them are graduating proficient in reading, but we have the highest graduation rate in the state. I'm like, yeah, but these kids are graduating illiterate. So tell me what job they're going to go get. As a matter of fact, just go hold the the uh, conversation with your, your uh, a normal high school kids. You you barely can because they're they so out of whack. You know, mm -hmm. and my my younger brother is in 11th grade and, you know, to see how, how many light years ahead he is, you know, to the other kids, because I've raised him, you know, and just listening to his friends talk and stuff. I'm just like, these kids is like so far behind. It's absolutely mm -hmm. ridiculous, you know, and, 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 but this is what we send our kids. This is where we send our kids. This is what we're fighting for in the public schools. Yeah. People fight me because I'm like, we need to take our kids out of these schools and, and put them somewhere. So, well, no, this public school needs more funding. I'm like, why mm -hmm. would I continue to fund the system that you claim is the, the school to prison pipeline? That don't make no sense to me. I'm mm -hmm. like, you, you say it's the school to prison pipeline, but then you keep saying they need more funding. I'm like, so we're going to keep funding our kids in the prison. Got it. You know, I'm like this, sometimes the, the stuff, you know, that they say is, is, <laughs> It's just, you know, crazy in our community, but, you know, I just keep my mouth shut and I just keep working so we can show, you know, um, what we're doing. You know, if we show it, you know, people can see it and then they'll want to do it themselves. And we've inspired so many people, you know, all over the world to get up and do something because they were able to see, oh, I don't need a whole lot of money. I started with zero dollars. Oh, I don't need no whole lot of money. I don't need a whole lot of this and that to start something. I don't need a, a gigantic program. So mm -hmm. all the time, you know, you can start with two kids. You know, I, I feel like every man should be responsible for at least one child that's not his. You know, I'm like, what if, what if mm -hmm. everybody, you know, get get one of the kids and, you know, or find a boy that you see walking down the street and going home every day and go talk to his mom. Ask, can you pick him up and take him to school every day? Go take him out to eat. Go mentor him. Talk to him. Give him some guidance, you know. And it's so many men that don't have kids. It's absolutely ridiculous why a lot of them can't just go take on the mantle and, Go go take care of some kids, man. Find a family to feed once a week. Find a reason to make somebody smile. This is what we all could do to make a difference. But sometimes people think that you have to be doing this gigantic thing and it got to be all over social media. Man, it was it was a point for like the first year or two 
that I wasn't posting nothing on social media. I was just doing it or whatever. And mm. somebody, somebody literally was like, oh, Brother Ben X. You know, he was just like, no, bro, you need to post what you're doing so people can give, you mm. know, like that. So he taught me how to do that. And I was able to build my platform, you know, from there. But other than that, I wasn't posting nothing. Like, I'm just out here doing the work, you know. But this is what you have to do to, to spread radical change. People have to see it. You have to show them. So that's all we've been seeing right now. That's all they push in the media is just vote, 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 and then your whole community is going to change. But that's not how it's going to happen. It's going to be sure voting is important. Now, don't get me wrong, but you got to do for self in your community too. You know, you can't be out here asking politicians to do stuff for you that you can do for yourself. As long as you give people the power to feed you, you're going to give the power to starve you also. So do you feel like um, grassroots community organizers face more scrutiny than actual political um, PACs or people who uh, candidates because they can hide behind a group? And like if somebody thinks about the extra boys, they think about King Randall. And it's just like, do you feel like maybe sometimes certain people who because I can think of a few who are doing grassroots things, but it's like people always target the leader or the, the person who founded it. And that that's their initial excuse for, oh, well, I'm not donating. I'm not um, supporting, you know? Yeah, people, um, you know, politicians and people in the media, whatever, they're all, like, bought by the same people. So they're usually going to get behind people who got that same type of message that they have. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get behind people like me who are going to give, like, direct problems that go against the the government system or what have you. They're not going to talk about those things, like, such as Breakfast Club. Like, they won't bring me on. They won't bring Mm -hmm. bring Rizzo Islam on. They won't bring on... um, uh, what's this guy's? I can't remember, but they won't bring them, bring us on because you don't know what we're going to say on there and mm. it won't be the truth. And you already know Rizzo going to come with the facts or whatever yeah. like that. You know, we've talked about it before, but they won't bring us on the show because they don't know what we're going to say, you know, and but you have to be controlled like that. You know, they control people, you know, like that. They're all in that same system. So, yeah, you know, it's a lot of, I guess, shadow banning, you know, from the media, yeah. you know like stuff that we're teaching because I'm teaching like masculinity and teaching boys to love, you know, women and teach them how to be mm-hmm. husbands, you know, and stuff like that, growing their own food. And, you know, it, it goes against the, what they need, you know, as far as the narrative of, you know, black boys are going to jail, black boys are dying, black boys are this and that and the third versus me uplifting them and, you know, and empowering them. Um, but you know, that's that's just the game with that. You know, that comes with the territory of doing something that's completely opposite of what the system wants. Um, when you're doing something like that, you know, obviously you're not going to get the press. Sure, they've asked me to, you know, sell out for 30 pieces of silver. That comes with the game. Right? Mm. I, don't, I don't know if y'all remember um, when I first went viral with Roland Martin. Of course, everybody came out of the woodworks like boom, boom, boom. Then all of a sudden you just stopped seeing me everywhere, you know, because they offered me 30 pieces of silver to sell out the division. Absolutely not. You know, and th- that was just mm. the game, you know, but people, I, I honestly thought that was like some cons- conspiracy theory type of stuff, like, or whatever. But literally, mm. like, as soon as I, like, I was going like this, everybody was reaching out. I went like super mad. I had like 6,000 followers before and then I wake up in the morning I got like 80,000 followers like in a day and I mean it was so much happening. Emails, interviews and then as soon as they like boom, here go the 30 pieces of silver to sell out your vision. Absolutely not and then that's when I disappeared from everywhere. You know, so mm. that's, that's the game. That is the game and that's how they play it, you know, but and you know after talking to Kanye about this stuff and all that it all just makes sense. It makes mm. so much sense all of it. Yep. Damn. Mm-hmm. Man, uh that that's 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 powerful. That's powerful because that, that's something I always think about um when you get to a certain level and a certain stratosphere. It's the same with politics. Um have you ever watched the show House of Cards? Of course. Yep. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it really gets me thinking about just like lobbyists and you know, super PACs and like how strong they really are. Like you you're your movement is only as strong as the integrity of its leader. You know what I'm saying? If your leader doesn't have integrity, the movement mm-hmm. ain't strong. I don't give a dang what the principle that if the leader yeah, ain't strong, absolutely. then it, it can be corrupted. But um, I also <laughs> wanted to talk about funding. Um, I heard you talk on high level conversations. Again, you were talking about um, funding and how a lot of people shared your content, shared what you were doing, you know, friends, family, supporters. Um, but a lot of people weren't financially supporting, which is, big because I, mm-hmm. I experienced the same thing with anything you know you put up a vision something that you're trying to do a lot of people mm-hmm. might share it, they might like it but they're not financially supporting that's the same with a clothing brand or something everybody you all your right. friends might share it but nobody's financially supporting mm-hmm. um, and then you talked about um getting some pieces of content and some exposure to take off and go viral and it really took the support financially to another level 
Um, what do you think is the X factor between getting people to share and, and, and spread the message than actually getting people to buy into it? Like, oh, yeah, this is something I'm going to actually donate to. Um, I think for us, the difference with our program and why we're able to kind of run off of donations is because people see the work. I know mm. a lot of people, you know, have donated to different causes and organizations and they never see the fruits, you know, of what they're donating to. You know, f- from the get go, I prided myself on making sure everybody sees exactly what's happening, you know, with their money like everything from the projects we do if you say you want to donate a can of paint i'm gonna show you that can of paint being put on the wall like Mm. that's what's gonna happen if you donate a toilet i'm gonna show you what's putting in that toilet like people have loved our program because they've seen the fruits of what they're donating to you know and people have donated to so many Mm. other organizations and causes and so many different you know um things and people don't get to see what happens with their funds or people act stingy with 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 people asking what's happening like people start getting arrogant about you know people donating and i'm just like well if people's donating they have a right to ask what the heck um they <laughs> what they where their money going mm-hmm. you know and then just like somebody just mentioned we have you know so many different ways to donate like we do we have the amazon wish list and mm-hmm. we have a walmart wish list and those are, these are other ways people can donate so that way it don't seem like they're just giving money they can they can donate the products that we need they donate ink for our printers or they may buy um they bought the boys beds or or bicycles or whatever we have on the amazon wish list so that way they feel like they're contributing contributing like that versus giving money so we just try to make sure we we have different ways for people to give you know but it's just all in people transparency and people saying like even one point we had our bank statements posted like no we want you to see every single dime that's moving around you know in our org you know so that way people continue wanting to donate so we have a lot of monthly donors you know people give uh you know on a recurring basis you know even if people i know people who give like one dollar a month like just giving what they can you know because they Mm. want to give to you know, an organization, but shares and likes and stuff, all that is important because if, if 10 people share it, I know at least one person is going to donate from those 10 people sharing, you know, so I tell people all the time, even if you can't give, you know, share it, tell it, tell your friends about it, you know, send, send somebody to the website, you know, it's a great story. I, and I will say people have thought that it was too good to be true. They've had to mm-hmm. see it, you know, with their own eyeballs. So I can definitely understand that sometimes because it does sound too good to be true sometimes. There's this free boarding school that a black 23-year-old's running that's teaching kids how to work on cars and houses and all that stuff. Yeah, right. Like, I understand. We've gotten that, you know, but I have to show the kids. I have to show what we're doing. Like, no, it's actually happening. But because you you have never seen it in such a long time, you know, it, it, it seems like it's, it's not real, but we're for real. You know, we're here. We're an actual program and we're working. So, you know, all, all that's going to come with, you know, just making sure people see that you're transparent. Um, but, you know, people I don't necessarily get upset. People not giving at all. You know, people give what they can. If the, and that's if that's only a like and a share, that's, that's great. You know, because people is exposure is important. You don't know who's going to see it. You don't know what celebrity is going to reach out to you. I mean, that's happened to me before. You don't know who shared it that, that got that celebrity to see it, you know, that reached out to us and helped us or whatever. You never know who might see it. So keeping that algorithm going and people sharing what you're doing is extremely important, man. I think everybody contributes in that way. So how, how do you um, go about um, breaking the whole codependency mindset um, sometimes that politics have of um, the the people who are, for, for, you, for your um, instance, the, the, the children that you're taking care of, mentoring, um, how do you get them to have that leadership mindset rather than, let's say, God forbid, you know what I'm saying, the program, something happened with the program, they'll be good you know, post them graduating, post them going off. Like, how do you produce that do for self mentality in them rather than, okay, well, we need somebody to provide and protect. Like, how do you get them to do, have that do for self mindset? Um, for one, starting off by building the confidence in those boys. I know a lot of people will tell kids, you know, um, hey, you talk, talk louder and mm. you know, man's hand when you shake it and look him in the eyeball and stuff but it's kind of hard for those boys to do that when a lot of them aren't athletically inclined or academically inclined they kind of just dare so mm. for those kids we teach them you know how to work with their hands or or make them feel important or proud of themselves you don't have to tell them that they just go and do it i don't have to tell them not to you know sag their pants i raise their minds and their pants will follow i raise their minds that grades mm-hmm. will follow i raise their minds and everything else follows that's that's kind of how that works so mm. again you, we we try to focus on so much and 
not focus on the actual mind, you know, of that child. You know, once you're focusing on the mind and you actually instill that stuff in them, I don't care what happens to me or if somebody tries and shuts me down or whatever. I know a lot of those mm-hmm. kids, you have to drop a bomb on the rest of them because I'm affecting so many of them. You know, um, they've tried, you know, doing little stuff to get me before, but they can try as much as they want, you know, but these kids are going to be there. Even if you take me out, my younger brother is unstoppable. You know, he's going to mm-hmm. be times 20 you know and i'm excited to see who he's going to be um but you know even my sons you know i, I still have to raise them you know mm. four and the other one's about to turn two you know to imagine who they're going to become and if i have more children like it's, it's going to be insane you know um so again as long as we're instilling these you know principles in the kids you know um especially for a, a extended amount of time with them um, doing the boarding piece with us, you know, they're staying with us. So you're talking about the habits we're building, like going to bed at a certain time, waking up at a certain time, reading, exercising, all that stuff is important, you know? Um, so, cause people, I don't post every day, but people don't realize like I actually have the kids 24 hours, seven days a week. Like I don't even post every day, but they're with me all day, every day. And it's not easy. It's hard. These 11, 12 year old boys you're talking about that eat a whole lot of food and there's a lot of stuff going on. Then they're dealing with their family issues and, and what's going on at home and all that stuff dealing with them, not wanting to go home and all that. Like, it's a lot. It, it is a lot, you know, emotionally, physically, it's a lot, you know? So I always tell people, you know, it ain't for everybody, but mm-hmm. you know, if you want to see that change for real, you have to put in the work. It ain't going to be easy at all. Do you feel like more people don't do that, um, that type of, grassroots efforts in their own city because we should have some type of model like that or just different things in every area, whether it's a food pantry or it's some uh, mentorship programs in like every city. Why would you say um, more people don't take that approach? Is it because they don't know the options that they have or how to even start it? Or is it that they feel like um, politics is honestly the easiest route? I would say a lot of them don't know what to do. Then also those who think politics is the easiest route. Then you got those who just want the community to change tomorrow. That's that's the, one of our biggest issues. Mm, yeah, yeah. I'm doing what I'm doing now to probably see some real change when I turn about 54. Like, mm. being real. you know, so you know, I'm I'm, I'm working for my grandkids right now, and they don't they're not even thought of at the moment. That's that's mm. that's what's important. Um, because we we got this whole change the community moral thing, and when, when is it gonna be the, enough for the black community? It's, it's never gonna be enough. There's not gonna be this one day of realization or this one fix for the black community. No, you have to focus on your area, what you're doing, your family, and the people around you and the community around you. If everybody did that, then yes, we'd have this big mass, you know, thing where black people are being changed or or what have you. But everybody's focused on changing the entire black community tomorrow, or who can do the best real to say the the most powerful thing to make the whole community change or who can make best real to make everything go viral who can say the best thing on breakfast club or who can go to revolt and say the best mm-hmm. thing and who can say the best thing is there's no there's not going to be one speech that's going to change the world it's not going to be one it's, it's not happening we got enough people doing reels videos speeches and all that it's only going to happen with the work every single time none of that's gonna fix it there's no change the community tomorrow scheme none of that stuff work now and then you'll see the progress later um but you got to want to work for your grandkids right now i'm not expecting nothing to change right now and that's what helps me work easier because i know it's going to happen later and these kids are actually developing so that's that's something i i I like to see it makes me want to keep going because i'm like man these kids and they turn you thought i was crazy at 19 when they turn 19 2021 Mm -hmm. they're gonna be bad Mm-hmm. So I, I would say um, it's, it's kind of like what you mentioned earlier when you said um, every man should mentor at least one child. I mean, one young black man is not his own son, you know, uh, and, and that's uh, very important. What would you say is one thing or maybe a few things that um, individuals in their community could do to positively make a change, whether that's volunteering or, or, or whatever? So on a, on a grassroots level. I always say uh, the first thing I say is find something every day to do to make somebody smile. Um, mm. that's the first thing. I don't care what it is, whether you tell somebody you like their shirt or try and lift them up, go, go give a dollar to that homeless person you tell no to every day, you know, like literally mm. like just find a reason to make, you know, somebody smile. I think that is one of the most important things that we can do, you know, in our community and then also working on ourselves. You know, a lot of us be so focused on everything else and we forget that the person in the mirror needs fixing too. Mm -hmm. Um, I I failed at that, you know, et cetera, you know, but people have to work on that. But it's it's so much anybody could do, man. And I know one thing we have to do is stop thinking that it has to be some grand thing. Like 
just go find a family to feed once a week, man. Go, go, go do something like go host a free car wash, whatever. Like just go do anything that helps. Literally. I call it the do something plan. Just do something, you mm-hmm. know, like, it doesn't have to be no major thing. It don't have to be nothing that goes viral every time. It don't have to be you giving out this and that, like go, go pay for the person's gas you see next to you. Like, Hey, is your car full? Well, let me fill your car up for you. You know, like in anything, it don't matter. Pay for the person's food behind you at the drive through like, any little thing to spark some change because you don't know how you're changing you know the dynamic of your community just by making somebody smile you could i could be talking to a guy at the grocery store and just hey man how you doing man you know blah blah have a good conversation and and he might have had a bad day at work but because i talked to him he's gonna go home to his wife and his family and give them some real love instead of being angry like you never know like what what ripple effect you will have you know in your communities by just simply being nice and being and cool to people and being calm and just being relaxed and giving people compliments all that is important man you never know how you're actually changing somebody's day or even changing somebody's life like i remember um this one girl when i was in high school people knew me for like just you know giving compliments to anybody i was mm-hmm. super nice i had a, i wore a suit to school every day but i was super nice but this one girl she didn't look the best but you know i told her she was beautiful one day i said you're so beautiful whatever and i, I left it alone like i think it was like two years ago she said king she said i remember this one day you came and told me i was beautiful at school she was like and that changed my whole life you know because i was like mm-hmm. a little bit more popular because she but it changed in my life she was like literally i always thought i was ugly. everybody always called me ugly but literally that one thing helped change her i don't know what she would have did you know she may have committed suicide or whatever but because i just was nice to her you know somebody's nice to you once you know that that speaks volumes you know so sometimes i'm glad of who i was you know even in high school because people come back or some of my old classmates come back and tell me you know how what i was doing at school affected them or how they were inspired by me at school or whatever like all that's important, man. Like you never know what you're doing for somebody by just simply just being nice and being a good person. That's what that's how you can change your community. Hmm. Self improvement is the basis for community development. Yep. I like that, man. I like that, and it, and it's the perfect message uh, on the hills of Thanksgiving, man. Just the hills of the holidays, man. I really appreciate you uh, um, just getting on here, man, and and really having this conversation with me uh, just about the different things that we can do. I definitely agree with just um, mentoring somebody. I mean, like, I don't I don't have children, um, but (laughs) I I mentor um, at least 10, 15 boys in in my city because we have a summer camp that we do um, at my old high school. And um, that that's it, it's the same type of stuff and, and everything that you're preaching and teaching is just like bro I, I understand it bro like I, I, mm-hmm. I get it I get it and especially I heard you talking about high level conversations about you know sometimes you have a break and then it's like the students go away and then they come back and it's just like they like dang you're a different person like you gotta back stay again. connected yep. with them when it <laughs> breaks and it's just like yeah I, I really get what you're saying like I'm just just hearing you talk with 90 keys about it it's just like really you really have to break that authority, mm-hmm. like, like, you know, uh, mentor, mentee, it really has to be like brotherhood. Like, it's really got to be like family. Like, that's really it's how you complete change family. You know, it's like family. Yep. Cause you gotta, you talking about dealing with their moms and then teaching them the things that they're doing wrong. But I'm also grateful to the parents that are with me cause they're willing to listen to me, you mm-hmm. know, about what's happening. Cause sometimes I'm like, mama, like, Look at what he's doing. Now look at what you do. I'm like, y'all are doing the same thing. And they're just like, dang, I ain't even think about that. I'm like, yeah, mama, he's doing the exact same thing you do. He's <laughs> his nose up like you. He's doing the little facial expressions like you. He's mm-hmm. doing a walk like you. He he's he's being you, but that's mm-hmm. you're all he's seeing or whatever. So don't chastise him like that because you're doing the exact same thing that you don't want him to do. So obviously there's a change in yourself that you have to make. That same thing with my younger brother. Like, my younger brother mimics me to a T. I cannot get over it. But I watch the things he does because then I have to look at it in myself. I'm like, oh, I do do that. Let me stop. You know, because I'm watching him, you know, watch me. You know, so I'm having to pay attention to myself or even like life mistakes that I make. You know, I'm super transparent in my life because I don't like people like they see people and they're doing good work, but they put this like messiah type complex on them. Like, oh my mm. God, this person's gonna change. I'm like, look, bro, I'm still normal. I'm still 23. You know, I still make regular people mistakes. You know, like that's, mm. that's that's what we do. People ask about my personal life, and I tell them, like, I've talked about it to my boys or whatever. Like, bro, I'm I've done stuff I ain't proud of, and recently, you know, so like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's life, bro. I'm not gonna be out here acting like I ain't never did nothing or nothing happened in my first marriage and boo to boo to boo. Like, I'm not acting like that. 
not at all. But all of that makes you who you are, you know, instead of trying to hide that stuff. And a lot of that stuff, I honestly feel like I went through and did to be able to to teach the boys from experience because I've been able to tell them, look, bro, I've been there or whatever. You ain't nothing you can hide from me. I just graduated a couple of years ago, by the way. So I don't know why y'all trying to put these little games over on me, but that's why they're easy to talk to me about stuff that they may be going on at school or, you know, things they may be dealing with, with girl issues or whatever like that. I'm, I'm just like, boom, this is how that's going to go. No, that's not going to work. Blah, blah, blah. Like I'm just being, you know, honest with them and they're able to talk, you know, because I'm not this older person coming to tell them what they should be doing with their life and i was in the streets and, and i was in jail and all that. I, hey bro i ain't got no story like that i ain't got no crazy story my mama went on crack and none of that craziness like i had a cool mm-hmm. man my mom and daddy was there i was raised with my granddaddy and my uncles and all that i learned how to do a lot of stuff i learned how to grow my own food i learned how to build stuff all that a, a super normal life ain't got no crazy stuff going on you know but it's always them people like i was here and i did this man you, can do, you don't need to do that da, da, da. i'm not look bro we're going to talk normal in here. Like, we're just going to talk like normal people. I talked to them about sex, everything. Even being as straightforward with them, like, people be like, oh, you better not be out here having sex. I'd be like, look, let me tell you something. I would recommend that you not have sex, but I know you're probably going to go do it anyway. But here, here are condoms. I, I would recommend that if you are going to use them, I mean, if you are going to go have sex, use these. Or whatever, take care of yourself. I prefer you not to have sex, but you're going to do it anyway. So here are condoms. Like, I'm not, we're not being fake with the kids. Like, we're going to be straight up with them. You know, especially living in 2022, man, like that's all you can do is be real with children because they're going to be more real with you than you are with them because these kids know a lot, man. It's insane. Mm. Where can they go to uh, support the school? Where can they go to support the initiative? Sure. Uh, you can go to xforboys.org. That's T-H-E-X-F-O-R-B-O-Y-S dot org. Of course, you can go follow me here on social media and you can go to our page and click the links. Or if you want to partner, our email is there, partner at the dot org. With anything that you want to reach out to us about, I will say we do get an overwhelming number of emails, etc. Mm-hmm. So please don't be mad if we don't respond in a timely manner or if we don't respond at all, because we have a lot to sift through, you know, uh, every day uh, as far as people, um, you know, wanting to partner with. Please feel free to send two or three emails, you know, so we can get back to you or reach out to me on social media and I'll try, uh, you know, responding. But other than that, man, um, that's how you can uh, support and reach out uh, to us and our organization. Once again, King, man, I appreciate you doing this with me, for real. Um, you. The, 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 the promptness of you being able to put this together and just been like, man, let's do it. Like, that's love. That's respect, man. Um, anytime I see, see you working, bro, I just be like, it's inspiration. Like, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. I seen you, when you went viral the first, I was like, this brother's on a different level, man. Like, this brother's on a different level. It was a blessing to be able to chop it up with you, man. I'm humbled, man. I appreciate you doing this. Thank you, man. I appreciate you for having me. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all tapping in this conversation, man. Make y'all, sure y'all get a brother a follow, man, and stay tuned next week for another conversation. This is King Randall Ahmad, the poet. Peace and blessings. Peace.